COVID is having that impact in the, in these areas where um, the that that sort of almost like secular bad things have happened. People are not, you know, it's been a rough couple of years, and and I'm going to blame the people who've been who are there now uh, just because I'm mad about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's a uh, on the margins that uh, some of those things might affect. I think, I think based just like, there's not any Democrat at this point getting totally taken by surprise. Like you mentioned, I we mentioned Colorado, the thing with like Washington state, which probably just talked about in the entire cycle is because they, they hate Teddy Murray. They don't understand what like a short woman is not very exciting. He's winning. Like she is, and she raised like a normal amount of money and not like Raphael Warnock record breaking money or, you know, Mark Kelly record breaking money. So, there are like not the reasons why like, the things that would flip people there. Some of them exist, and that is, but like the thing, it, it, well, it's just generally East Coast bias. Like Washington had a pretty good pandemic experience. It, the decisions that were made during COVID were pretty pop, were popular. Seattle voters or Democrats like kicked after the after they had a very high profile 2021 election where they replaced the city leadership and, and some some of the, the concerns crime went down. So I, I, I think it, I think a lot. Of it, I bring that up because there are Democrats who I think you know four years ago might have or longer than that eight years ago might have run out of money and been surprised if something popped up at the last minute. And I don't think they're there anymore. I just think there are some people like Murray and uh, uh, Bennett who, if things got real crazy at the end, they don't have like a few money that they can dump in, like Warnock or Kelly or uh, or Federer. All right, so. Uh, uh Democrats hold the Senate? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think Republicans will win by uh, by a couple. So where is it that, that they're going to lose? Nevada. Uh, I think I think Nevada. Uh, I think Georgia in a runoff uh, is, is very possible. Uh, I think Pennsylvania and Arizona are both possible. I just think things would need to be exactly different. And, and I, 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 I mentioned Arizona. Um, I'm not sure in that sense, but in Arizona, you just have. That's another one where, like, your public have a very unpopular candidate uh, who uh, you know, has a record that is very easy to go after on TV. It's just that is a place where there's enough people who are like, you know, I'm a, as a working class person, I'm not paying a lot of attention, but me, if, nor should I, but, like, Republicans say they're going to fix these problems, so I'm going to vote for them. I think there's, there's nothing that going on. I'm literally about to head there, so I will see how correct I am. Uh, but I think, I think, like, I see. I, it's easier for me to see a few races breaking their way. So they've got they've got those seats. And, uh, but the turnout so far, bad. Democrats are doing well enough. Where I don't think there's going to be. This is 2014. Everything broke against them. Yeah. And it's even a race where their candidates were popular, people just like forgot to vote. And that has not happened this year. All right. Well, I hope you're wrong at the very least about the Senate. Um, uh, oh yeah. I mean, and it, it, like the stakes of this are being not well reported. Like, the fact that there will just like not be any more people confirmed to anything in the Republican Senate, I don't think it's being very, very widely reported. Oh my God. In the election. <laughs> if the Democrats lose the Senate, the only thing that's going to happen are going to be the investigations out of the House. That's the only thing that happen. There will be nothing, nothing will happen. Um, you know, maybe I, I, there's a couple of things maybe you can do as a... Uh, as an executive order, but you know, half the White House staff is going to be dedicated towards uh, the impeachment hearings, and so uh, yeah. it's going to be uh, it's going to be rough. Uh, Dave Weigel, often a pleasure. I mean, today not so. You know, I, I was, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, uh, I I would have it would have been more fun uh, if you had thought that the Democrats were at least going to hold the Senate. But I mean, yeah, I'm out there. I'm seeing what is happening, and if things change, I can I can tell you. Uh, but that's well, what I appreciate the, I appreciate yeah. the frankness, but nevertheless, yeah. if you want to come back on this show, you've got to tell us what we want to hear. Don't you understand? <laughs> well, it's not sad. I mean, I'm just saying that like I, you're being honest, and I'm being honest, and it's like more often than not, it's a pleasure to have you on. I'm just being. I'm just. I'm just telling you what I'm reporting, which is today not as much of a pleasure. Well, I, it was, it's been a hey, pleasure to speak to you either way, so thank you guys. All right, well, we're all just being honest here. Yeah, let's talk about honesty. Um, all right, Dave Weigel, uh, really appreciate it. I, 
uh, I signed up for your newsletter the moment it went up, uh, even before it was uh, live. So I really appreciate yeah, it. I think one went out while I was in here, unless I missed something. Oh, I have read it. Thank you very much. I asked Bernie what he thought of uh, if Tulsi Gabbard was like dividing the left with her campaign <laughs> and right now, and he said, if the answer is, David, my focus is on 2022, so he didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> but we have a fun Bernie interview with some other stuff in Texas. Yeah, enjoy it. It's good. It's good. Yeah, right. I'll check that yeah. out. I'm, yeah. um, we'll have plenty more to talk about that in the uh, in the coming weeks, months, years. Uh, Dave Weigel, okay. always a pleasure. We'll put a link uh, to your newsletter it's said before. Thanks. All right, guys. Folks, we've got to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will be talking to uh, Matthew Film Guy. And um, hopefully, you know, he'll be, I don't know, a little bit more okay. sure. Right. Yeah, I go. <laughs> <laughs> we got all the way through that. Why goes like that? Yeah, I mean, God. I know. I, I, we probably should have asked him beforehand what he would have been doing on stage so I could brace myself for that. Nevada is insanely concerning. <laughs> yeah. Well, and apparently Georgia and um, and Arizona. I mean, folks, good time to remind you. Vote. Tell your folks to vote. Tell your friends to vote. 75% of this audience is younger than me. We have record-breaking uh, early voting around the country. But one cohort does don't seem to be doing it. Our uh, young folks. Now, let's not re- refer to those those uh, voting patterns of yesteryear. Where yeah, you know, don't be a like Yeah. Uh, people didn't vote. The uh, younger people are more sort of in touch, and I get it. It's not uh, a, a electoral politics uh, are not even necessarily uh, the most important thing that will bring about change in, in this country. But they're a week and a half off, and um, right now, if you want to talk about changing the direction of this country. In the next two weeks, there is nothing more you can do than uh, voting and getting other people to vote. Quick break. Be right back with Matthew Film Guy.
Uh, Matthew Film Guy, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, uh, MLB here uh, back in, in just a moment. Um, you are, and I can tell because I recognize the room. Oh, wait a second. What? Oh, that's your that's your office. I always think of, uh, of, of your bedroom uh, because when we were editing back in the day, you, you would edit in your bedroom. That's right. Now, but I expanded. Yeah, those are those were the days. Are you still in that same? Are you still in that same place? That's right. Great Ranch since 1997. Thank you very much. There you go. Uh, Matt, you know, yeah, 25 years. Um, but the last time we saw you, you were in in California in some right. sort of like um, safe house or something like that. It was a yeah, weird bunker, antiseptic, THX style edit room. But it was just an Airbnb in the middle of Beverly Wood. Okay, and so uh, remind us what you were there for and how what? Uh, I was out there editing uh, another independent feature film called September 17th, directed by Brittany Snow, uh, also written by her. It was, let me just say, a very intense, very, um, as always, um, draining, well, I might even say stressful. I actually didn't leave that house very often. I think I may have related this. I uh, was working, you know, 12 to 14 hour days, put this together, you, you know, the whole story, not enough money, not enough time, uh, even some creative differences in there. Um, I actually wound up going to the emergency room at a senior side of the hospital because what I thought was a massive pinched nerve in my neck, it turned out to be shingle Sam. Oh, no. Yeah, so I even worked on this movie going through shingles. Uh, that is the one of yeah. the most incredibly painful things in the world. You know, that's what they keep telling me, and I don't know if it's because I already take the abapentin, this drug for uh, a pinch nerve that I've already had, if my, I got off a little light. So it wasn't, like, completely debilitating, but the whole half of my head was numb. It was it was something. It was something. So it was not fun. But, um, yeah, you know, that's what it takes to work in independent film. Uh, it's now, are you going to go out and get your uh, shingles uh, vaccine now, or are you, are you just feeling like, I don't need to do that? Yeah, you can really get. It's apparently it's easier to get after the first time. And also, not to make this medical corner uh, disclaimer, as Joe Rogan style, uh, but I also saw that Australia had a study that said it, you're 50 percent more likely to get it after COVID. So I don't know if the fact that I had COVID also led me to be more susceptible to it. I only had it, I don't know, two months maybe before that. But um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question, Sam. I'm going to contemplate that. I'm probably going to get my COVID booster and then decide if I'm going to get that. I can, I can tell you, I got the shit right. It, 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 it's going to put you out for a day. I mean, it, it is, um, we're talking about like a side effect. Like plus. Um, like plus. It, I, my, my arm, I just remember just like blew up to here. Um, it, it made me look a little bit more like a... Uh, Swole? Broad chested, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say this, okay. and, and then we'll move on from this, and I know that we've talked, uh, somehow Fridays ends up like, uh, I'd say the the number of times that shingles has come up on a Friday, I don't know right. why, why this is. Uh, but is this is this a casual Friday? Casual Friday, and... Uh, and you bring it up, that's the thing. Well, no, I, we had Andy Kimmer on, and he brought it up, and, that, and that's how I... Do I have a missed it? I actually got it while I was out in L.A. So oh, okay. wow, so it is shingles. I'm not saying, like, hey, how are you? Have you caught shingles? Okay, I, I stand corrected. And I don't say hi to everybody, I got shingles. I will say this. Sort of did. Sort of the existence of shingles is what scares me about, uh, you know, COVID. Because shingles we get from the chickenpox virus. Right. You get it as a kid. It lives somewhere, I think, maybe in your spine or somewhere around there. I'm not exactly sure. The virus. And then it comes out 45 years later, 50 years later. And, and, and causes you know, uh, shingles, and which yeah. is an extremely painful uh, condition for everybody who's not already so you know hyped up, yeah. hopped up on drugs that they can uh, feel it. And, and um, so I don't know. Well, I had my head laid out.